Hi everybody, it's Sam McGuire. We're gonna look at how to connect to your computer and control apps such as Final Cut Pro remotely via your iPad. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna look at how we can do this using a program specifically called Ignite from logmein.com. Also, we're gonna look at how Skype plays into this. And we're gonna look at something called Soundflower. Okay, first things first, you need to create two different Skype accounts. So we're gonna be Skyping to each other from our iPad and from the computer we wanna to connect to. So once you have that done and installed, actually inside iOS, we have a Skype app. So you'll install that there. And on your computer, you'll install the actual downloadable Skype application. So I've got two different accounts. One of them is my normal account and the second one is called Sam McGuire Studio. So that's what we're gonna be connecting with on the iPad. Now on the actual computer, we've got Skype as well. And you'll see that my contact is online, myself in this case, and we're gonna be going back and forth. So this requires a little bit of setup in advance. The other thing that we have to do is create an account with logmein.com. Logmein is a service which you can use to connect remotely. Now this is not the only one that works, that's available, but it's very powerful and it's the one we're gonna to demo today. Now the catch is, we have this free service, which you can go computer to computer, but then you have to buy the iPad app, which is actually one of the more expensive apps. It's around 30 bucks. They've had sales on it before, but it's not necessarily a free app. So that is the most expensive part of this connection back and forth. So once you have this created, we can actually log in, and this will show us all of our available computers. So you can see all the different things I've got connected. All of these from computer to computer are free. So that's one of the bonuses of this. Now, the other thing we need to install is Soundflower. We can get this on the web, just do a Google search for it. This allows us to send audio from our computer into another app. So this allows us to connect application to application. The way we're gonna be using this is to send the output of Final Cut Pro into the input of Skype. Because a lot of the apps we're using in terms of connecting to Ignite on the iPad don't transfer sound, so we need some way to get sound back and forth. So that's what we're gonna be using for sound. So here we go, what we have inside of our system preferences, first of all, once we have that installed, come into sound and we're gonna choose Soundflower 2 channel for the output. That means Final Cut will now go out that. And then inside Skype, we come in here to our preferences and we set the microphone to be Soundflower 2 channel. So that means the output of our system is now going into the input of Skype. That way, when we listen to our iPad connect via Skype, it'll hear everything our computer is doing as an output. So if you're using a screen control that doesn't have sound, this is a great way to get around that. Okay, so let's now connect to our iPad. Okay, so now it's transferring audio from our computer to the iPad. Next, what we want to do is get out of Skype and let's go into Log Me In. So you'll have to actually go to the computer you want to connect to and register that computer with the site before you can do this. But then we can log into our account from the iPad, choose that computer that it's on. It'll now go and share the screen with us. So here we go, it's loading. Keep in mind that everything I've done so far has been on Wi Fi and even though it's on the same network right now, it's still one of those things that has to go out to the LogMeIn site then back. It doesn't really help performance to have it on the same connection. So here we have it now. This is the actual screen for the computer. We can close down that little dialog there. And then we can go through and treat this just like anything else 
open up apps, etc. So let's come in here and open up Final Cut. I can use two fingers to scroll, just like that. Let's scroll up to Final Cut, right there. Double tap to open it up. Once that's loaded, you're going to see the screen right here. And then we're going to go through some of the settings, which can help us fine tune performance. And last but not least, we're going to look at this in one other setting. Something maybe a little bit more realistic to the situation we're going to be on. So let's flip this into full screen mode now for a second. And we can now play. Keep in mind that the only thing you're hearing is the sound coming out of the iPad. There are no speakers from the computer that we have access to right here. So if we wanted to keep our keyboard up, we could. Okay, so that's as easy as it is to get in here now and start doing things in Final Cut. So right off the bat, you can think, well, this is great. We can leave our main computer home. If we need to make a quick edit to something, we can now control it, hear what we're doing in decent quality sound. I mean, that's pretty good if you're on a good connection. There are a couple things we can do to really fine tune our settings here. We can come through and change our color quality. Compress means it's going to, you're going to lose quality, but it'll move faster. We can go to high quality. That's nice if you just want to look at some still images, but if you're going to do video, it's really too choppy in most cases. We can also go grayscale or auto, depending on the needs there. We can come through here and change our resolution. Network speed. I typically leave this on auto. It'll determine what's best in that sense. Scroll mode. So these are the three different options here, which can really be personal preference, but most of the time I prefer the mouse moves. That's right here. So you can see that I move my finger and wherever I put my finger down, the mouse is going to move in relationship to that. It's not going to move to wherever I put my finger down. It's always going to be in relationship to. We can come here and do screen moves. That puts the mouse in the center. We move the screen. There's actually a lot of times that I would use this for video editing because it's nice to be able to quickly navigate through. And then we have direct. So you can see right here, there's actual mouse on the screen. And I click on this and move it around. The nice thing about this is we have access to left and right buttons right there on the mouse interface itself. Like I said, a lot of times I like the mouse moves just because that's the one I've gotten used to and I kind of like being able to see exactly where that mouse is. And I can touch anywhere and just move it around. Plus, you can throw it, and it will keep on moving. We also have the keyboard that pops up. We can choose what a click does. Do we want it to be a right click or a left click? So if I put this in right click mode, everything out here will be a right click when I tap. You'll see the menu comes up. We can zoom in and out, and then we can end our session. Now this isn't all that this app does. This is the primary thing it does. Let's come out here to end session. It's going to pull us back out into this main area. Click on this icon here. And this opens up local files. So now we can come through and see the files that are available on that computer's hard drive. So if we export a video, we can then come over here and actually open the video. We can copy it. We can move it, update it, rename it, delete it, or email it. So all those options are useful. Many of them actually will allow you to work remotely between other computers. So say I've got two other computers someplace, and I say copy this file from that computer to that computer. It will actually copy over the web between those two computers. So essentially it's like an FTP or a Dropbox, send it. All of those things can be used from this. We can also open it right here on the iPad. So say we're done with it. 
we want to show our client what we've been working on, we can say open and it will pull it to the iPad locally. Then we can watch it there. So very useful in a lot of different ways. Last thing I want to look at, I want to demonstrate how this works over a different network because we're on Wi-Fi right now. It's all great, right? Let's come in here. The other device I use a lot, it's called MiFi from Verizon. It's a 4G device. It creates mobile hotspots. So we're going to connect to this and see how this works instead of being on a nice, fast internet connection. So let's click on it. First thing you'll notice is that as we switch over, Skype is going to be lost. And that's fine. Let's go out there and make sure everything's still going to be working with that. Go into Skype. Okay, so it call ended. Let's call it back. We answered the call. Let's now come out here and go back into log me in. Again, remember, we're on the network. We're not even on Wi-Fi. Okay. Here we go. We are live with this now. And even though things are sluggish and not working, and I'm sure my data plan gets eaten into every time I have to do this, but this is a way that I can connect to my Final Cut Pro anywhere I've got Verizon network. So it's a great way to be able to combine all these different technologies into this real mobile partnership. So we can edit, do final export. We can just say, bounce this out and then leave it alone or tell it to render something and turn it off so it's doing it while you're not even there. Great tool to be able to do this. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know at sam.mcguire at me.com.